All right, welcome back to the 1962 Triumph TR4 restoration. And finish the video? I just finished a paint and body video, but now we're physically starting the mechanical restoration of this car. So this is going to be the beginning of a new series. So don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's going to be part one because <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be multiple parts. Yeah. Anyway, the first thing uh, Alin's going to do is um, we realized that when we uh, were taking the carburetors off that we had a missing stud on the rear most uh, exhaust manifold and in further investigation now the stud is actually broken off in there so Alin's going to attempt to extract that stud some way shape or form so we can when we come to obviously reassemble that stud will be there because we're going to need it so we did uh, already manage to get the old uh, manifold off. If you saw one of our previous videos, was that one of the, was that our will it start video? I can't even remember. About oh, no, it would have been later, right? About the carburetors? Yeah. Anyway. So on one of the previous videos, we were removing the carburetors and they were physically stuck to the manifold here where the carb bolt through the top of the manifold. So those two tabs ended up getting broken off when we extracted the carburetor. So there is the old manifold there. I did bring a replacement manifold. Do you, where did you put that? Over there. Okay, so here's the replacement manifold and it's all painted, ready to go. Uh, new studs, new gasket. Somebody by the name of uh, David might recognize this. This was actually from, from my 1957 Triumph TR3 project. So we're going to repurpose it temporarily and put it on the 62 TR4. I believe it's the same manifold. So we've got that standing by to go back on the car along with some new gaskets, obviously. So while Alin's working on extracting that stud, I am going to actually start working on tearing down the front suspension um, and brakes. So got myself kind of a semi shady spot here and uh, I'm going to grab my tools and we're going to slowly start disassembling the front suspension and brakes on the 62 TR4. So the car is going to be incapacitated in this spot here for probably a day and a half, probably. So hopefully we don't need to get the black TR4 out. Elaine's still waiting on parts for that. So we've got a little bit of a window to have the car in this position until Elaine gets parts for this TR the black TR4 behind me. All right, let's get crack a lockin'. All right, we're just about to start tearing down the uh, front suspension. And uh, we have all new parts for the brakes and for the suspension bushings um, and the brake lines. We actually have new calipers, new rotors. Uh, we will check the wheel bearings and repack those when they're in there, while we're in there. Hopefully they're in good shape because we didn't get new ones of those. But uh, I'm not going to show you step-by-step uh, step on this. Maybe I'll set you up as a time-lapse. There's lots of videos out there, including videos on my channel and, and Lynn's channel on how to do this. So I suggest you maybe do a search and follow those versus trying to uh, watch me do this on a uh, time-lapse. Anyway, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull off the calipers and we're going to get rid of the uh, soft brake lines and then we'll go on from there. We'll move the rotor and hub assembly and go on from there. All right, I decided to stop and unpack my parts because we're having a problem with getting the tie rods off. Um, the, they're just spinning. So I thought I would check to make sure that I ordered, or I got the tie rods, I know I ordered them. So tie rods are here. And while we're going through the boxes, we still have another bunch of parts to go through over there, but they're not related to uh, brakes and suspension. So what I have on the table here, uh, just quickly. Uh, so we have new front brake rotors and we have new pads for the front also have a fitting kit we also have brand new calipers for the front um, they were on sale so i figured uh, by the time we rebuild the ones that are on the car get all new stainless pucks and a rebuild kit it's probably fairly close in price to actually just buying brand new calipers and that'll speed things up a little bit um, we got a brake master cylinder here don't really need that at the moment but uh, brake master cylinder we've got a, a again going for the front here a full suspension kit for the front We've got uh, a pair of ball joints for the front. We've also got some ball joint boots just in case. 
This is all the rear brake stuff, so brand new rear, rear brake drums, rear brake shoes, retainers. Uh, these are, um, uh, this is a fitting kit. And this is uh, new wheel cylinders for the rear. And then we got some suspension stuff, uh, some drop links for the um, lever shocks. These are the buffers for the front suspension. Uh, these are the pins, the spring eye pins. Uh, for the rear springs. Uh, we got some bushings for those here somewhere. I probably put them back in the box, but these are the uh, lock plates for the rear back brake plate on the rear axle. And uh, some more bushings for the front suspension. Full uh, copper nickel uh, brake kit for the hard lines and my soft lines, which were abraded stainless in black, were back ordered, unfortunately. So hopefully they'll arrive in the next little while. All right, that's it for now. Get back to the car. All right, welcome back. Friday the 30th of June. Hard to believe that June is almost over. Long weekend up here. It's uh, Canada Day up Canada Way. So we plan hopefully on the car over the long weekend. Anyway, I uh, didn't take too much video after I said I was going to set you up and do a time lapse on the front suspension yesterday because we almost immediately ran into an issue with getting the tie rod off it was actually seized and we actually had to cut it off so that took the wind out of our sails temporarily at least so i turned the video off and never turned it back on but as you can see we've got the uh, front driver's side suspension all stripped down now and it's all sitting over here and guess what i'm going to be doing today so um i am going to uh wire brush this down and give it a quick paint job it's not going to be perfect but it's definitely going to be better than what it is currently so i can't really justify putting it back in the condition that it's in um uh, some of you might think that it's probably okay to put it back since we're doing kind of a, a rusty beauty but that's kind of not my style so i am going to make the effort to uh to scrub it down with a wire brush and uh, and get these painted it only takes about four hours for this paint that i'm using to dry uh to handle so it shouldn't be too long of a process and while that paint's drying obviously i can disassemble the uh, driver's side, or sorry, the passenger side uh, front suspension. Um, I did bring a table, a work table to work on out here. Probably gonna use the, uh, the shed as a hanging drying compound for the parts that we take off. So uh, we're just about to grab the folding table out of the back of my car and uh, we'll set some parts up to be uh, cleaned and wire brushed. I also brought a exhaust with me that I've been sort of saving for this car. Actually, I was telling Alin it's a fairly rare exhaust. I believe it's a Stebro exhaust that one of the former Toronto Triumph Club members gave me some time ago and I've had it in storage. I believe it will fit this car without any modifications. Uh, and I can always use the stainless steel exhaust that's on this car. I can use that on my 59 TR3 project. So that kind of makes more sense to me. If we can do the swap, we'll, uh, we'll swap it out. So that's what we're going to do. Oh, I should mention that muffler or that exhaust. It's obviously used, so it's got a bit of surface rust on it. So we'll be stripping and painting that with some high temperature paint this morning as well. Anyway, that's about it for now. So uh, we're just getting set up for the day. And uh, Alin is going to actually do a couple of welding jobs. Um, there's a little small, uh, little crack in the frame. Then we discovered that... Uh, the mounting points are, there's a through bolts for the, um, the bump stop on the bottom of these cars. So the bracket is there. So they're well known to sort of corrode. And uh, I know John Puckett's aware of this. Uh, he's working on a TR3 and had to have this area repaired. So there's a little plate with two uh, sort of pipes or tubes uh, that go through the frame. And that front uh, section of... Uh, metal has rusted away so Alin's going to fix that and we found another little spot at the front of the frame that needs a little repair so he's going to do that while i do the uh, stripping and painting and then we'll find something else to do oh i think he's going to do the removal of the rear exhaust since we need to drop the exhaust anyway because i think i'd mentioned or maybe i haven't mentioned that we're actually going to be pulling the axle out of this car and in order to pull the axle out you need to drop the exhaust because the axle has to come down off the frame. So it basically drops out the bottom of the car and the exhaust needs to be dropped to be able to do that. So we have to remove the exhaust anyway. So we'll probably do it a little earlier than anticipated. All right, that's it for now. So what are we gonna do?
We're gonna go get crackalacking. Get crackalacking. Mm -hmm. All right. I like your soap. Shit. Some... It's getting a little hot and steamy in here, though. Can you go to people's driveways with your uh, bring my, uh, mobile soap? And... <laughs> <laughs> Just be careful with my engines and my yeah, car there. Don't get, get it get dusty. Any debris on them. <laughs> yeah, no, they haven't been outside yeah. for years. Actually, we should have put these Webers on this car. Maybe. Yeah. You yeah, think well. they're going to work? No. Well, now we have those rebuilt by Alan. Yeah. All right, so this is what I'm doing here. It was initially just a small crack here, and then there was uh, just one plate that David wanted me to put right here. But then as I started digging, this tube came completely detached. It needs to be somewhere there, but it was hanging on this. <laughs> so it was staying there. Anyway, so... Did you show him the pile of dirt there? Yeah, I'm showing it to oh them right God. now. Anyway, so looks like even behind here needs to be repaired. So I'm just going to cut this off now. And uh, I'm going to repair this part with this included. And then we're going to put this back and we will see how we're going to deal with the tube. We might just put some dirt again there and shove the tube in. <laughs> we'll put some JB weld in there. Yeah. All right, the sun's come back out and uh, we've run our parts while well, we've de-rusted them as much as we want to on the wire wheel. And then we run them through the parts washer to degrease them. Now I've been out here with the hose and uh, the Dawn and we've cleaned them up uh, as best as we can. So the next step is to probably just hit them with some uh, pre-cleaner before we uh, go ahead and spray paint them in the semi-gloss trim clad. And we're going to hang them up, I think, on a line in the shed and do that towards the back of the shed. Maybe get some paint on the snowblower back there. So we'll probably just stretch a ratchet strap across the, across the side to side and uh, go to town painting in here. Again, it's pretty humid today, so I don't know how well the paint's going to dry, but we'll do our best. All right, the uh, parts are now cleaned as well as they're going to be cleaned. And we're ready for our first coat of Rust-Oleum. We're going to do these in semi-gloss. So we taped off the bits that uh, don't want to get any paint in them. And I think we're ready to go. So we'll give them a, a, a light coat and a heavy coat. All right, suspension parts are painted, at least one coat and drying. Lynn's still over there uh, working on the front of the frame section. So I think I'll turn my attention to the exhaust now. So this is the exhaust I was talking about. So I believe this is either a Monza or a Stebro. I believe it's a Stebro. Um, again, it's quite old, but it's in good shape. It's a little rusty, but uh, we're going to clean this up and then we're going to give it a coat of uh, high temperature paint and polish those tips up. So we're going to be just using a Rust-Oleum high temp. It's usually used for, I think, barbecues and that kind of thing. Got it over here. So just doing a, do a gloss black on this. It's good up to 650 degrees Fahrenheit. Special heat resistant uses, barbecues, fireplaces, wood stoves, so that should suffice for this. So again, wire wheel and clean it up and then we'll give it a quick uh, coat of paint. Never see it's going to be under the car, but at least I'll know it's done. All right, the pig, uh, the pig is <laughs> not going to edit that, I know. I'm going to edit it. Okay. All right, so the big repair is down here. It's kind of looking good and now we have to do this one so where is the piece that i cut off 
this is the piece that I cut off from here. Um, but the tubes, where did I put the tube? This tube needs to be welded like this. And as you can see here, the rare remaining part of the sheet metal, these were pretty deep inside. So if I put this piece here, I'm not gonna be able to weld around because I can't put my welder from inside and weld in this corner here. So I'm kind of thinking to do a cup on the outside, like flush here, because when you put the bracket that goes here after that with the bumper, it creates the same wall here. So it doesn't matter that this sheet metal is inside, the bracket creates a wall on the outside and there's still a pocket which gets filled up with dirt. So what I'm thinking of doing is put this there, put the tube inside, then cap it on the outside like that and maybe even make a little flange here and close this like that. Wow, this is the perfect size actually. <laughs> so close the top as well so it doesn't get filled with dirt because that's why it rusts because dirt goes in, holds the moisture and rusts everything. Anyway, if you don't understand, I'm going to show it to you when it is ready. Yeah, but is it going to be concourse? Yeah, it's going to be concourse. It's very original. Okay, good. Original to the Rusty Beauty's garage. Good. All right, well, Alin's doing the welding. So I've finished the uh, front suspension parts. I've finished doing the first coat on the exhaust system. So now we're going to focus back on the, uh, the hub and uh, rotor assembly here. We're going to separate these two. And we're going to pull the bearing out there and give that, well, we'll give the hub a, a clean. We'll get the bearing out and we'll uh, give that a good clean and uh, re-grease as well. And we'll put the new um, hub back, or the, the new rotor back on once we clean and paint the hub. So that's what I'm doing on the inside of the garage where it's nice and cool. All right, we've got the hub removed from the rotor. And we're just about to go give this uh, wire brush and some paint. We've got the uh, components stripped over here, so the bearings look good. We'll just do a little bit more cleaning on those before we get ready to install. There's the uh, oil seal, or grease seal, the dewasher, the bolts there. We're going to uh, uh, lock tight those in place once we put them on with new lock washers, once we get the new rotor ready to go. So like I said, we'll go out, uh, wire brush this down, give it a quick coat of paint, and get ready to reassemble. All right, this is what I mean. So... You see how I capped it on the outside and now I can put my other piece here like this just need to clean it and I can weld it around even made the cups for here and on the other side so I can weld those and that's gonna be it I'm just gonna spray some paint inside just in case and uh, I pre-fitted this, made sure that the, the bolts can go through, and they do. So that's it. I'm gonna show it to you when it's welded. All right, it's done. This about was time. <laughs> about time, yeah. It took me probably what, four hours, five hours? Probably five hours. Yeah, well, I went to the post office, you know, but anyway. It was the most complicated repair so far on this car, but it's done. I test fitted the bracket, it fits well. And the wheels don't look great, but once they're painted, I guess the paint is gonna hide the, <laughs> the ugly stuff. I'm not even gonna grind it, it looks good. And I forgot about this one. I already pulled away the stuff, <laughs> the tools. <laughs> All right, bring them back. All right, since uh, Alin's given you a quick update on what his progress has been, I'll give you a quick update on mine. So the exhaust is over here, it's painted. Front coil spring over here painted. The hubs over here painted, drying. Um, and I think I showed you, maybe I didn't show you all these. So these are pretty well dry now. These we did first thing this morning. Now coming up to about four o'clock. So those we can play with tomorrow. I believe. 
So I think uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start, if you want to clean these wheel wells, the inner tubs up a little bit and recoat them with uh, rubberized undercoating. So uh, Alin's going to finish up that one little repair area in the front. And while he's doing that, I'm going to work on the rear here just to clean this up a little bit with a wire wheel. And then we're going to recoat with the uh, undercoating to make these wheel wells look a little bit better. So hopefully we don't find any holes once we start with the wire wheel because uh, Alin's tired of welding for today at least. All right, so there's a before. Doesn't look too bad in there actually. So we'll just clean that up a little bit and spray some fresh rubber, rubberized undercoat in there. What are you doing now? So we want to take the rear exhaust off so in order to do that, we couldn't have a free hanging uh, downpipe. So we're putting our new exhaust manifold on oh, with new gaskets. That's why. So getting this out of the way. And Make your sure. stud's working really well, your brand new studs. Yeah. Which was missing on this side. Oh, you know what? You didn't show the... We did something wrong. What? Well, I did something wrong. But I realized it before it's tight. What? Isn't that uh, heater hose supposed to pick up that stud? Yeah didn't do that okay but it goes after the Are manifold sure? yeah yeah after? so okay. you just need to pull out Another. the nut okay never mind i didn't do anything wrong <laughs> well you're the editor uh, of this I video remembered it. yeah did you just put it what am i you're the editor of this video oh. <laughs> so you can edit anything no, you want all, out we show all the ugly stuff okay this is all not right. torqued or anything so but it's tightened up but did you mention this morning that we pulled this stud off that was broken here that was yesterday wasn't it yeah, but you didn't film it. No. Oh. Uh, whatever. Well, it took you four hours. Yeah. <laughs> so not only fix this stud, but you also, there was a bent one, right? That you pulled yeah, out? Yeah, I pulled out I, this one. This right one. Yeah, this one was the bent one. Yeah. And then we replaced these with the new one. All new so, hardware. Yeah. So now we're going to put the downpipe on. David is going to put the gasket 90 degrees. You can't screw this one up. <laughs> this so, one is, goes yeah. 120. So this one we've got uh, ready to go. You can't screw this one up like that I did on the TR6. So, <laughs> all right, we'll uh, put that uh, downpipe gasket on. We'll uh, attach the downpipe and then Lynn's going to tackle this clamp back here, maybe, uh, where this is clamped here in the center. And we're going to try to, it is a stainless exhaust. So we're hoping that it comes apart fairly easily. Maybe the last guy used Annie C's. Keith? <laughs> maybe uh, maybe Keith used some anti-seize when he put this on there, but if not, hopefully it's going to come off okay. And then we can do a fit check probably on this guy over here. I'm pretty sure it'll fit, but you never know until you try, right? So, all right, little hands, man. Get your little hands in there and uh, finish your beer. <laughs> I uh, What am I doing? Oh, yeah, I'm working on... Uh, oh, yeah, I didn't show this yet. Oh, jeez. Anything? <laughs> you filming me? Now? Yes, I am. Okay. So this video is gonna be half of it is gonna be upside down. Because no, I'm gonna fix it. I'm, I'm reshoot. This is a reshoot. So we're gonna reshoot. All right. Uh, Lynn's making me do some editing. So uh, I did want to show you um, that we've actually gone ahead and we've done the undercoating, the rubberized undercoating, on the rear here, and that looks nice and clean back here now there were no holes back here fortunately the one in the little uh, trunk area we'd already fixed that one so uh, the plan is when we pull out the rear axle we are going to paint the frame i don't know if Alin knows that i think i think he knows it by now um anyway we're going to paint the front area of the frame so we may as well paint the rear area of the frame and then what comes after that the oh, middle right. the middle section of the frame the body, comes off. The, body <laughs> the body's staying on but we'll do what we can do when things are out of the way so, okay, so Alin's going to do the downpipe. I'm going to work on the undercoating on the uh, driver's side front and make a mess over there. All right. Somebody's beer is in the way. It's going to shake off in the, onto my head. Are you done with your nap now or I can take the mic? I'm done with my nap. Yep, thank you. Um, so we're going to call it the day out here. It's probably, what, 5 o'clock? 5.15. 5.15. So we had a pretty productive day today. Um, that is looking much better than it did this morning. So we've got the frame 
cleaned and painted with semi-gloss black. And we've got the uh, rubberized undercoating where it needs to be here. So that's definitely looking good. So pretty much ready to go back with the uh, suspension and brake assembly whenever we get to it next, hopefully tomorrow. Um, it is a long weekend here, but again, uh, I might have to come and work on this myself. It depends on Mr. Family Guy over there. He might be doing stuff with the family, which is fine. I can uh, tinker away here by myself if need be. I can let myself in, I hope. <laughs> um, so yeah, that looks good. Uh, Alin um, did the downpipe and the manifold. Uh, we th think that's where we left off the last time. So that's all installed and tightened down. So that's one less thing to have to worry about. Um, he also, remember we were doing that in order to get the exhaust off and that is off and we have that over here on the table and we were just uh putting it up to the uh, stebro exhaust in comparison just checking where the mounts are and it looks like the mounts are exactly in the same location so that's going to help when we go to reinstall the exhaust so last thing we did obviously i think i showed you this but we did the uh, rubberized undercoating here on the passenger side rear and i think that's where we're going to leave it for today uh-oh, the gang's all here. So there goes the peace and quiet. Anyway, uh, so that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for commenting. And we'll see you on the next video. Good morning. All right, it is Saturday, July the 1st, 2023. Happy Canada Day to all my fellow Canadians out there. It's gonna be a hot one here today. It's actually gonna be very humid, so probably close to 95 degrees Fahrenheit with the humidi humidity. I think that's about uh, 34 degrees Celsius, somewhere around there. Anyway, uh, we're gonna start working on the car this morning at least it's a chance of rain in the afternoon as well so we'll go as far as we can we're going to start with uh, reassembling the front suspension in yesterday's video we basically cleaned and painted all the suspension components we got those in here and we've got a few bits in other places but we'll uh, concentrate on getting the uh, driver's side front suspension back together that's looking good in there nice and freshly painted and freshly undercoated so let's get crack a lacking all right might be working a little bit uh solo today alin's uh, off to the post office box to see if the parts are in for the black tr4 behind me he's hoping they are Although I think it said uh, he can't pick them up till after 1 p.m. He's, he's gone early this morning to see if he can get them a little bit early so he can get working on the, or finishing the differential for this car behind me. Anyway, in the meantime, I'm going to start uh, reassembling the front suspension on the driver's side of, the, of my TR4, as mentioned. And we're gonna start by rebuilding the hubs back together with the brake rotor. So as you can see, I've got the, uh, the bearings uh, on the table in front of me. We just put them through the parts washer. I'm going to take them outside, blow them with compressed air, and then get ready to grease those up so we can drop them in, back into the hub, uh, which I'll go and grab from the uh, outside drying area. And uh, we'll put the new rotor on and uh, 
torque those bolts down and uh, get that ready assembly ready to go back on the car. So that's what we're going to do first this morning. Nothing too hard. We're just going to ease into it. All right, we've got everything uh, cleaned up and standing by for assembly. So cleaned our hardware up and uh, new lock washers ready to go. Bearings are ready to go, cleaned up. We've got our oil seal here, our dewasher there. The cleaned uh, hub here, we're going to repack that with some grease inside before we put the bearings back in and the seal back on. So that's looking pretty good. We are going to be doing new rotors, just uh, not slotted or anything, nothing too fancy. We're just using the uh, Moss Classic Gold uh, part number 586509, disc front brake 10.75 inch. And uh, I think we're ready to assemble. We're just going to be using uh, wheel bearing uh, and chassis grease. This is just a local Canadian tire brand that I have. Couldn't find it in the uh, tubs actually at the store. They were sold out. So just got a tube here. We're just going to be using that. We're going to make a mess with that, but that's okay. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, start reassembling. All right, here we go. May as well do these bearings while we're here. I just do them, um, I think uh, Alin's got a, a bearing packer. I just do them in the palm of my hand generally. Okay. All right, we've gone ahead and uh, torqued those um, brake rotor attachment bolts, brake rotor to hub attachment bolts to 35 foot pounds. We are using the uh, brown uh, Bentley manual for torque values. So we are following along, just so you know. So we'll continue on with the assembly. 
Going to put the bearings in and the rear oil seal. Actually, rear grease seal. All right. That is ready to go back on the car. All right, we're just going to rebush our uh, upper and lower control arms. And I've got Moss part number 660988 to do that. These are just rubber bushings. Normally I would go with poly, but uh, budget's a little bit of a concern on this build. So we're going with rubber and hoping there's some longevity in them. I know that the rubber parts on the market are not great currently, but we'll see what we can do. I also have another package of bushings that I've had kicking around in my storage parts for some time. So we may check these. This is another uh, bush set. We may check to see if the quality of these is any better and we may go with these. These have been around for quite some time. so. Anyway, we'll see what we're going to use, but uh, the plan is to use the Moss kit. All right, I've just unpacked the kit and took a quick uh, overview, and you can see it sort of laid out here on the table. This is enough to do both sides, obviously. So bushings, uh, grease seals, uh, thrust washers, uh, special washers, nylon bushings, sleeves, tassel nuts, nylocks. These are the bronze bushings. I don't think we're gonna be using those. I think ours are in good shape. These are the uh, Trunnion oil seals or grease seals and they even sent you some cotter pins, that's nice. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to uh, put back in the box the uh, components for the passenger side since we don't need to deal with them right now. Um, so we'll split the contents in half and put it back in the box so we don't uh, lose them. All right, here's the uh, kit broken down by side. So it's a little less daunting looking. So you know basically that you need to use all these parts on the table if you get this reassembled correctly. Again, I didn't uh, include the bronze bushings. They would go here in this end of the suspension. This would be attached to the car uh, at the rear frame or uh, rail. And this would be at the front where the trunnion is. And actually we need to clean the trunnion up still. So I neglected to do that yesterday. So we'll get the trunnion cleaned up and polished up before we go much further. I uh, just wanted to mention that with rubber bushings, you cannot use a petroleum based grease. So you need to use something like a synthetic grease. So we've got some Permadex synthetic grease here or a silicone based grease will work. Um, so let me clean that trunnion up and then we'll start to uh, reassemble off the car. All right, we just uh, polished the trunnion up on a uh, brass wire wheel. Yeah, it's looking a little bit better. We didn't go crazy on it, but it's definitely nice and clean. So we'll proceed to the next step. Uh, now that we've got that clean, we can put that out of the way temporarily and get back to our rebushing job on the upper and lower control arms. Okay, even if you've done the suspension before and you're fairly familiar with it, it's always a good idea to have the workshop manual out beside you just to uh, refresh your memory. So we're starting to work on assembling the trunnion. 
So here it is here. So thrust washer on each outer face, and then there's a grease seal that goes on top of that. And then you build off of that. So not gonna be doing much talking here. We're just gonna follow the manual as mentioned and try to assemble as per the manual. Let's start on this side. Okay, I should mention that uh, I'm just assembling it fairly loosely on the one side. I did tighten down the thrust washer on the one side because you need a little bit of pressure to set that inside the thrust washer. What do they call this one? They call this, uh, let me look it up here on the manual, number 46. 46 is called a serrated washer. That is, uh, let me see if I've got one here. Rusty. So this is called a serrated washer and it gets pushed over the splines basically. So you need a little bit of force to push it over the splines for to set it, but uh, we only want to set it, I only set it on the one side because you need to sort of split the lower control arms to get them on the, on the frame pivot points at the rear of the car. So we don't want to set that hard. We want to be able to separate it. All right, Alin's back from his post office run and he's not a happy camper. Yesterday when he was there, he told them, or they told him that they'd be open today. But apparently because it's Canada Day today, they're closed. So wasn't able to pick up his parts. So not good. And obviously it's a long weekend here. So government run, it's probably not gonna be open till Tuesday. Anyway, he's gonna have a co coffee and relax for a bit and then Probably going to end up giving me a hand since he doesn't have any parts to work on the black car, unfortunately. All right, Alin's push those uh, nylon bushings in the rear here. So those are good. And then these get these steel sleeves in here. So hopefully they'll push in fairly easily after I lube them up a little bit. So I'll stop talking again and just keep assembling. Okay, we bushed the uh, upper control arms and we only put the one side of the, uh, the rubber in because you'll probably find that it's difficult to get these on the, uh, the fulcrum pin if you have both bushings installed. So you need to put the bush on the fulcrum pin first and then push the control arm on. That's my experience anyway. Not enough clearance uh, up there between the, the body tub and the fulcrum pin. You yeah, really have to sort of maneuver it, particularly on the left hand side to be able to get that back on the pin itself, so we'll just keep the inner bushings separate for now. Uh, Alin's pushed in my nylon bushings and my steel sleeve. I will need probably the outer bushing so I can so we can push it more, but oh, yeah. don't know how much. Okay. But let me put this underneath. Okay. Is it this one? I'll be back. So then on the uh, inside of the control arms where our lens just pulled, pushed in the steel bushings, they, they get a little a nylon washer on either side, uh, like this. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll just put them there temporarily. But that will go like that. It's like a nylon thrust washer. And uh, they're gonna have grease seals on them as well at the rear, so we'll fit those. 
and uh, then we can probably get our uh, vertical link and we're going to screw that into the trunnion. We've got our our top oil seal for the trunnion as part of the kit, which is good. So that fits directly on top of here before you screw in your vertical link. Uh, you need to figure out whether you're going to want to use, there's a big discussion on this, whether you want to use grease or oil in the uh, in the trunnion itself. I'm not sure, uh, again, off the top of my head, the earlier cars might have used grease, and then they decided that the grease was uh, picking up grit and acting as sandpaper on the threads of the vertical link, so they ended up going with uh, gear oil, I think in the later cars. Don't, well, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that's my assumption. So I may just go with, uh, with gear oil um, instead of grease uh, right off the bat here. All right, right or wrong, I've decided to go with grease in the trunnion initially, because I don't have any gear oil here, so I'm gonna make do with what we have. So here's our vertical link, all painted up nicely. So we're just gonna screw that in until it bottoms. And then I usually turn it back far enough so I get a full turn. might need to take your stop out to get it to go down completely. Okay, so that's bottomed out entirely. Well, we want to make sure that when we do bottom the trending out that we have full movement from lock to lock. It hits the steering stop at the rear. So that's looking good. So that is now assembled. And our steering stop is tightened down. So pretty much ready to go. Actually, we can probably do the uh, brake back plate or the caliper back plate. Probably assemble that and get that ready to go. All right, I think we uh, probably skipped a few steps, but uh, we pretty much have the assembly all together now with the steering arm on and the uh, caliper brake plate. So this is pretty much assembled and ready to go on the car. Obviously, we still need to torque some fasteners down. I think what we'll do now is we'll move to the car and we'll put the upper control arms on. Uh, get those out of the way. So I'm not going to be able to take you outside and show you, but just assume that uh, they're going on the car. I'll show you afterwards. All right. So we kind of thought this might happen today because uh, it was forecasting thunder and lightning right on cue. So I had to take a break, forced break. We didn't get the uh, suspension put to get back together yet you can see the vertical link just kind of hanging there so we had to move back indoors and it's not looking very good for the rest of the day so that sucks what are you gonna do when you're determined that's what happens you work even in the rain yeah. i think i'm gonna bring an umbrella to hold above him so he can work <laughs> all right the uh, sun kind of came out and stopped raining for long enough for us to reassemble the driver's side front suspension pretty much most of the way obviously the uh, the hub and rotor has to go on but everything else is in there and uh, torqued down, obviously the brake line not attached. We're getting new brake lines. I think I mentioned our brake, brake lines, our stainless steel braided lines are back ordered. So we'll have to wait to put those on anyway. So this side is almost complete. Another probably 15, 20 minutes and we'll be good on this side. And in the meantime, Lynn uh, basically went and disassembled the 
passenger side, 100%. Hello, cat. Sunning yourself. So everything is over here ready for me to scrub down. So that's going to be some work probably tomorrow. And uh, you can see what it looks like there right now. So that's what the other side looked like a little while ago. And we'll get this side looking uh, just as good. Actually, this side, I think it looks a little bit better, bit better as far as the undercoating is concerned. And Alin's telling me it looks like the frame is solid on this side with the exception of that uh, bump stop area. It looks like it's already going to be a problem the same as the other side. So you'll have to do a bit of a welding repair there. So anyway, making progress. One odd thing is uh, this side seems to have a new road spring for some reason. The other one was the old spring, so I'm not sure what happened there, why they just changed out one spring. That might be an interesting story. But anyway, making progress. Sorry we haven't filmed a lot. We've just been sort of tucking in between the rain showers, so um, a little difficult to work on the car when it's raining and on and off. Anyway, that's it for now. We'll, uh, like I said, we'll probably wrap up the driver's side and then we'll uh, probably focus on cleaning these parts up and getting them painted so we can reassemble this maybe on Monday. All right. All right, uh, end of day. And uh, I guess it's been somewhat productive uh, between the uh, rain shower. So anyway, we've got basically all new front suspension. Um, all new brakes at the front, again, waiting for our brake lines, but uh, we're going to do hard lines a little bit later. We have the kit to do that, but soft lines we're waiting for. So that's looking good. Um, so the whole intent of this project is that this car will be pretty much brand new underneath as far as all of the uh, brakes and suspension are concerned. And uh, frame should be uh, looking pretty good by the time we're done with it as well. It'll be... Uh, repaired where need be and painted where need, where need be. So we're on the right track. Anyway, we'll get back to the uh, passenger side probably tomorrow and start cleaning that up and getting it painted in order to get it uh, reinstalled, hopefully maybe Monday or Tuesday next week. All right, welcome back. Sunday morning, July the 2nd, and we are now starting to work on the passenger side suspension bits. So we've uh, Got some stuff up on the table here to work with this morning. We're going to do the same process as we did a couple of days ago. Uh, lots of degreasing, uh, de-rusting, wire brushing uh, prior to painting. So we're just uh, starting the process now. So that's my morning is, consist, uh, is going to consist of uh, cleaning these parts up and getting them into paint. And then we'll figure out what else we're going to do today. And maybe just this. It is a Sunday, so maybe we'll get to relax a little bit. But let's see how the day goes. We have to take advantage of the weather while we can. It's currently not raining, which is great. All right, just coming up to 12.15. And really not much to report. Just been out here cleaning down parts. So we wire wheeled these. These were a disaster. They had a lot of grease and debris on them. As much as I've ever seen on any car that I've worked on. So these are all... Scrub down as far as they're going to be and de-rusted as far as they're going to be. So they've been wire brushed, then they've gone through the uh, the parts washer and scrubbed down in the part washer. Now they've been scrubbed down with uh, Dawn and uh, sponge and cloth. So now we're just going to wait for these to dry and then we're going to do the process where we hang them, give them a couple coats of paint, let them dry overnight, and then we'll come back and play with them tomorrow. I do have the hub somewhere that needs to be painted. I've cleaned that up. I've separated the rotor from that inside the garage so we'll bring that out and we'll give that a quick coat of paint as well so i think that's going to probably be it for today it's just going to be uh painting and i think i'm going to be out of here for the rest of the afternoon i'm going to take the afternoon off been working pretty hard at this car so need a little bit of relaxation this afternoon i'll end out at wonderland with the family so i'm here in the rusty beauty's garage myself and i got the tunes cranked and hopefully the sun's going to come out soon good morning it is uh Monday, July the 3rd, so it's a stat holiday up here. So we are back on the uh, 1962 Triumph TR4 restoration project. And uh, Alin is starting the morning off by uh, doing a little bit of welding. Uh, we're working on that um, bump stop bracket where those tubes have rusted out similarly to what they did on the other side. Uh, although apparently a little less worse on this side, so that's a good thing. So um, yesterday I was here and uh, painted and got the uh, parts uh, hanging overnight, drying, so they should be good to go. I've just been playing on reassembling the hub 
this morning. So we've got the bearings all cleaned, greased, and reinstalled in the hub. So that's ready to go back on the car. I'm just sorting out all the hardware and uh, getting new nylocks, new uh, lock washers, etc. So there's all the hardware from the uh, front suspension. And uh, we're going to shortly grab all the suspension components and start rebushing those as well. There's the aforementioned hub ready to go. So anyway, making progress again. Hopefully by the end of today, we'll have the front end suspension back together. Uh, I did find in my spare parts stash some stainless steel brake lines. I think I'd mentioned in, probably earlier in this video that my brake lines that I'd ordered were back ordered. So I actually had some already in my parts stash. So we'll put those to good use today as well. And uh, get close to getting the front end done as far as uh, the brakes are concerned. Uh, still need to run the hard lines underneath the car. But getting closer every day to getting the front finished. So... Ready to work? Yep, let's get crack locking. Let's get crack locking. <laughs> All right, Alin has uh, finished off the welding repair for this little bump stop uh, tubes, as I'd mentioned that he was going to repair. So that's looking good, nice and solid. No frame repairs required on this side. So next step is for me to uh, clean up the old undercoating as best as I can, clean up the uh, the chassis as best as I can. Then we're gonna do a little painting. The suspension bits are, are ready to go back on the car. We want to clean and paint this area before we go ahead and do that. It's uh, probably the right time to do it. So we're just about to get messy under here and uh, make it look like new. All right, quick update for you guys. Coming up to uh, 4.30 and the passenger side is now completed. Again, sorry, no videos today. I was just sort of getting tucked in, wanting to get that done. It is pretty hot out here in the sunshine but at least it's sunny and not rainy. So we managed to get that back together. The only thing that I didn't, uh, I wasn't able to install was the bump stop on the bottom because the car is on a little bit of an angle here on these uh, patio stones. And uh, as I was lifting the car, I was tipping it off the jack stand. So this little bump stop still has to be installed on the passenger side, but that's pretty much about it as far as the front suspension and brakes are concerned. Uh, still obviously need to do the brake lines up there, but that's going to be another day. So I think we're quickly uh, moving on to another area of the car. I think we're gonna start with the rear axle next. So we may have to resituate the car because that's gonna probably be a mobile for probably a few days while we pull the rear axle entirely out of the car. We may even just pull the front end of the car in the, uh, in the barn here and just leave the rear end sticking out. As long as the Lynn can get cars in and, out of, in and out of his garage, I think we'll probably be okay with that. So at least the car is back to rolling once we get it off the stands now with the suspension now done. So that's a good thing. So I think we'll call this a video uh, and we'll uh, post this as part one of the mechanical series. And then we'll get back out here shortly and start working on part two. So once again, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting and thanks for subscribing. We will see you on the next video of the 1962 Triumph TR4 restoration.